Good morning. I am Assistant Professor Dr. Dalia Basil. Our lecture today in medical microbiology is focusing on uh, general informations, uh, general characteristics, and the diseases that are caused by some bacterial species such as Yersinia, Pastorella, Rickettsia, and Mycoplasma. First of all, we will talk about Yersinia. Yersinia are pleomorphic gram-negative growths that can exhibit bipolar, bipolar staining. This is a characteristic of this bacterial species under light microscope. They are catalase positive, oxidase negative, and microaerophilic or facultatively anaerobic. Most have animals as their natural hosts, but they can produce serious disease in humans. The genus Yersinia includes Yersinia pestis, the cause of a plague, Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, and Yersinia enterocorrigitica, which are associated with human diarrheal diseases, and several others considered non pathogenic for humans. Yersinia pestis and plague. Plague is an infection of wild rodents transmitted from one rodent to another and occasionally from rodents to human and causes the disease the previously uh, uh, known as Bla Black Death, which was a serious pandemic disease causing millions of fatalities. The ability of this organism to be transmitted by aerosol causing or uh, this can associate with pneumonic plague and this also make Yersinia pestis as a, or considered as a potential or biological weapon. In the adjacent image, you can see the life cycle of Yersinia pestis when it is causing the plague. Uh, the antigenic structure or variance factors of Yersinia pestis, uh, which uh, help the bacteria to cause the pathogenic or increase the pathogenicity of this bacterial species, uh, one of the most important antigenic structure is lipopolysaccharides. Lipopolysaccharides of Yersinia have endotoxic activity. The three pathogenic species produce antigens and toxin that act as virulence factors. Three pathogenic species, uh, as I mentioned previously, Yersinia pestis, Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, and Yersinia sorry, enterocolitica. They have type 3 secretion systems that consist of a membrane spanning complex that allows the bacteria to inject proteins directly into cytoplasm of the host cell. So, this is an important system, aids the bacteria to inject. Uh, its protein directly to in cytoplasm of the host cell. The virulent Yersinia produce Yersinia produce V and W antigens, which are encoded by genes on a plasmid of approximately 70 kilo base pair. This is an essential for virulence of this bacteria. The V and W antigens yield the requirement for calcium for growth at 37 degree uh, centigrade. Yersinia pestis has gained additional plasma. So, in addition to the antigen structure of uh, or antigenicity of polysaccharides that help the bacteria to inject uh, the protein inside the cytoplasm of the host cell the bacteria gained additional plasmids. Number one, plasminogen activated in protease. Protease plasmid is a nine and half kilo base pair contains gene yield protease that has temperature dependent coagulase activity. This is an important point in the 
life cycle of the bacteria inside the uh, flea body and also uh, this temperature dependent coagulase activity also uh, has another activity in the uh, in the host or in the human body uh, so we can see that uh, coagulase activity of plasminogen activating bodies at 20 to 28 uh, degrees centigrade the temperature of the flea while it has fibrinolytic activity at 35 to 37 degrees centigrade the temperature of the host by meaning the temperature of the human body this factor is involved in dissemination of the organism from the flea bite injection site also the bacteria has or gained uh, the uh, fraction f plasmid uh, 80 to 101 kilobase pair encodes the capsular protein that is produced mainly at 37 degrees centigrade and confers antiphagocytic properties. Also, this is an important protein to bacteria. In addition, this plasmid contains genes that encode phospholipase D which is required for organism survival in the flea. Regarding the pathogenesis, pathogenesis sorry, and pathology of Yersinia pestis, the activation of plasminogen activating protease, which has temperature-dependent coagulase activity or fibrinolytic activity, will occur when the uh, Flea feeds on a rodent infected with Yersinia pestis. The ingested organisms multiply in the gut of the flea, and this will help by the coagulase activity. Also, help to block the proventriculus of the flea so that no food can pass through. This will lead the flea to feel hungry and seeking for other infected rodent to feed or blood feeding. Subsequently, the blocked and hungry flea bites ferociously and the aspirated blood contaminated with bacteria from the flea is regretted or injected into the bite wound. The inoculated organisms may be phagocytosed or phagocytized by polymorphonuclear cells and macrophages. So, the bacteria will phagocytize by neutrophils and macrophages. The Yersinia pestis organisms are called the polymorphonuclear cells or which is called or what we are called uh, neutrophils but multiply in the macrophages because the bacteria are multiplying at 37 degrees centigrade that produce the antiphagocytic protein and subsequently are able to resist phagocytosis. So the bacteria are called by the first uh, defense uh, immune cells which are called polymorphonuclear cells but uh, further multiplication will occur in the macrophage, so the, the bacteria persist in the uh, macrophage and resist the phagocytosis of the macrophages. The pathogen rapidly reaches the lymphatics and an intense hemorrhagic inflammation develops in the enlarged lymph nodes, which may undergo necrosis while the invasion may stop there. Yersinia pestis organisms often reach the bloodstream and become widely disseminated. So, so the, sorry, the dissemination of the bacteria uh, occurred when the bacteria reach the bloodstream. Hemorrhagic and necrotic lesions may develop in all organs, meningitis, pneumonia, and serosanguinous. Uh, pleopericarditis or are prominent features of the disease. Primary pneumonic plague results from inhalation 
inhalation of infective infective droplets usually from a coughing of a patient with hemorrhagic consolidation sepsis and death so the pneumonic plague uh, differs from the uh, plague that transmitted from a flea infected with uh, Yersinia pestis from rodent pneumonic plague results from inhalation of infected droplets of the patient. This slide is showing uh, pneumonic plague or pneumonic plague regarding or focusing on entry uh, and uh, exit of the disease, also the uh, organs that affected in uh, plague in uh, pneumonic plague or pneumonic plague. So uh, the entry and exit of pneumonic plague are eye, nose, and mouth. And also the excretion of the bacteria uh, or the patients when excrete the bacteria from nose and mouth become highly contagious. The disease of pneumonic plague usually with 100% mortality. So this is a dangerous disease when infect the human beings. While the pneumonic plague exit also from eye, nose, mouth become uh, or uh, the patient is considered highly contagious. Uh, also disease non uh, cause black hemorrhage lymph nodes pneumonia, internal organ hemorrhage also presents in the two types of the disease. Uh, separating of the disease also through lymphatic and uh, systemic. And entry in the pneumonic plague is the bite of infected rat flea, while the entry of the pneumonic plague through eye, nose, and mouth. Clinical findings or clinical symptoms of the plague. After an incubation period of two to seven days, there is high fever and painful lymph adenopathy. So the affected region is uh, feverish and uh, pain, painful. Commonly with greatly enlarged tender nodes in the grain or axilla, this uh, will um, give the name of Pabonic plague to the disease. Vomiting and diarrhea may develop with early sepsis. Then, dissemination uh, of intravascular coagulation leads to uh, hypotension, altered mental status, and renal and ca cardiac failure. Terminally, signs of pneumonia and meningitis can appear, and your senior pestis multiplies intravascularly and can be seen in blood smear. In this slide, we can see the main symptoms or general symptoms of the two types of the disease, pneumonic plague and pneumonic plague. Uh, there is fever, headache, cough, hemopathesis, dyspnea, chest pain, and weakness of the muscles in the pneumonic while in the pneumonic plague, there is fever, headache, malaise, and the lymph nodes are swollen, the pus exudation from the lymph nodes, and the bleeding also, nausea, vomiting, pain, and ache of the joints. In the laboratory diagnosis of plague, blood sample is taken for culture and aspirates of enlarged lymph nodes uh, also will be taken for smear and culture. In pneumonia, sputum is cultured. In possible meningitis, CSF is taken for smear and culture. Your senior pistis are small gram negative bacilli that appear as single cells or as pairs or short chains in clinical material. Rites, gimses, or Weissens stains may be more useful because of the striking bipolar appearance of the organism using these stains that is not evident on a direct gram stain. So, 
these stains are more suitable for staining of the bacteria. More specific direct staining methods possibly available through reference laboratories include the use of fluorescent antibody stains targeting the capsular F1 antigen. Uh, plague may have a mortality rate of nearly 50%. Pneumonic plague, nearly 100%. The drug of choice is streptomycin, but the more readily available amino glycoside gentamicin has been shown to be as effective. Pathogenesis of these uh, two bacterial species, Enterocolitica and uh, Yersinia pseudotuberculosis, uh, an oculum of 10 to 8 to 10 to 9 Yersinia must enter the elementary tract to produce infection. Yersinia enterocolitica has been isolated from rodents and domestic animals, example sheep, cattle, swine, dogs, and cats, and water contaminated by them. So then transmission may occur by contamination of food, drink, or vomitis. During the incubation period of four to seven days, Yersini multiply in the gut and mucosa, particularly the ileum. This leads to inflammation and ulceration and leukocytes appear in the feces or the stool sample that uh, can be taken from the infected patient. The process may extend to mesenteric lymph nodes and rarely to bacteremia. So after the extension to lymph node or uh, separating by lymph, the bacteria may distribute it by blood stream causing bacteremia. Clinical findings. Early symptoms include fever, abdominal pain, and diarrhea. They are a range from watery to bloody and may be due to an enterotoxin or to or due to invasion of the mucosa by bacteria. At times the abdominal pain is severe and located in the right lower quadrant, suggesting appendicitis. Very rarely the senior infection produces pneumonia, meningitis, or sepsis in most cases it is self-limited so it differs from your sinuses that may cause or produce pneumonia meningitis and sepsis blood and stool samples may be taken from a patients as a specimen stain and smear are not contributor the number of your in a stool may be small and can be increased by cold enrichment so, a small amount of feces or a rectal swab is placed in buffered saline with pH 7.6 and kept at 4 degrees centigrade for 2 to 4 weeks. This will lead to increase the number of bacteria. Many fecal organisms do not survive at this temperature, but Yersinia and Chirocolitica will multiply. Subcultures made at intervals on McConkey agar may yield Yersinia. So the subculturing of bacteria on McConkey agar also uh, leading to uh, increase the number of bacteria. Most Yersinia infections with diarrhea are self-limited, but Yersinia enterocolitica is generally susceptible to amino glycosides, chloramphenicol, tetracycline, primethoprim, sulfamethoxazole, pepercillin, third generation cephalosporins, and fluorpunilins when we need to treat the uh, disease in infected patients. Now we will talk about pastorella. Pastorella species are primarily animal pathogens but they can produce a range of human diseases. Pastorella are non-motile gram-negative cocobacillae with a bipolar appearance on stained smear. They are erops or facultative anaerobes that grow readily on ordinary bacteriologic media at 3 degree, at 37 degree centigrade. So 
they don't need to uh, an enrich media or a special media to grow. They are all oxidase positive and catalase positive but diverge in other biochemical reactions. Pasturella maltosida occurs worldwide in the respiratory and GIT of many domestic and wild animals. It is perhaps the most common organism in human wounds inflicted by bites from cats and dogs. It can also produce human infections in many systems and may at times be part of normal human flora. Pasteurella bt has been recovered from infections of the human genital tract and of newborns, while Pasteurella pneumotropica is a normal inhabitant of the respiratory tract and gut of mice and rats. A few human infections had, have followed animal bites. Also, that means that Pasteurella pneumotropica transmitted to the human through the uh, animal bites. Pasteurella uri has rarely been found in animals but occurs as part of a mixed flora in human chronic respiratory disease or other suppurative infections. The clinical findings of Pasteurella infection, the most common presentation is a history of animal, animal bite followed within hours by an acute onset of redness, swelling and pain of the uh, region of bites. Regional lymph adenopathy is vulnerable and fever is often low grade. Pasteurella species infection sometimes present as bacteremia, so there is a separation or dissemination in bloodstream or chronic respiratory infection without an evident connection with animals. Pasteurella maltosida is susceptible to most antibiotics. Penicillin G is considered the drug of choice. The third bacterial species in this lecture is Rickettsia. Rickettsia are pleomorphic intracellular cocobacilli that often have a transverse septum between two bacilli. This is the uh, characteristic feature under right microscope. This uh, transverse septum will uh, give an, or reflect division by binary fission. They do not stain wall with the gram stain, but are readily visible under the light microscope when stained with Gimza stain, acridine orange, or other, other stains. Rickettsial infections are characterized by fever, headache, malaise, skin rash, and enlargement, enlargement of the spleen and liver. Number one or first disease uh, called epidemic typhus, Rickettsia caused by Rickettsia broski. In epidemic typhus, systemic infection are severe and fever lasts for about two weeks. The disease is more severe and more often fatal in patients over uh, 40 years of age. During epidemics, the case fatality rate has been 6 to 30 percent. Second, endemic typhus caused by Rickettsia typhi. The clinical picture of endemic typhus has many features in, in common with that of epidemic typhus. So, uh, it's resemble to the uh, previous type, but the disease is milder and is rarely fatal except in elderly patients. Spotted fever group. The third one, the spotted fever group resembles typhus clinically. However, unlike the rash and other rickettsial diseases, the rash of the spotted fever group usually appears First, on the extremities, move centrally, and involves the palm and soles. The case fat, uh, fatality rate varies greatly. In untreated Rocky Mountain spotted fever, it is usually much greater in elderly person, up to 50% than in young adults or children. 
Protection box is a mild disease with a rash resembling that of varicella about a week before onset of fever. A firm red papule appears at the site of the mite bite and develops into a deep seated vesicle that in turn forms a black fixture. The laboratory diagnosis of rickettsial infection or rickettsial disease depends on serological tests. An antibody rise should be demonstrated during the course of the illness. In Rocky Mountain spotted fever or spotty fever, the antibody response may not occur until after the second week of illness. PCR has been used to help diagnosis of the disease the sensitivity of this test in diagnosis of this disease is about 70%, comparable to that of the skin biopsy with immunocytology. Tetracyclines are effective, provided treatment is started early. Tetracycline is given daily orally and continued for three to four days after the furthestness. In severely ill patients, the initial doses can be given intravenously. Torrentine call also can be effective. The last microorganism in this lecture is mycoplasm. There are over 150 species in the class of cell wall free bacteria. At least 15 of these species are thought to be of human origin. The general characteristics are number one, the smallest mycoplasmas are 125 to 250 nanometer in size. Number two, they are highly pleomorphic because they lack a rich cell wall. So there is no fixed or confirmative shape of mycoplasma and instead are bounded by a triple layer. So instead of cell wall, they are surrounded or bounded by a triple layer unit membrane that contains a sterol. So mycoplasma requires the addition of serum or cholesterol to the medium to produce sterols for growth. The third point or the third one, mycoplasmas are completely resistant to penicillin because they lack the cell wall structures at which penicillin acts, but they are inhibited by tetracycline or erythromycin. Mycoplasmas can reproduce in cell-free media on agar. The center of the whole colony is characteristically embedded beneath the surface. This is the uh, characteristic feature of mycoplasma on agar on, or on culture media. Growth of mycoplasma is inhibited by a specific antibody. Mycoplasmas have an affinity for mammalian cell membranes. Many pathogenic mycoplasmas have flask-like or filamentous shapes and have specialized polar chip structure that mediate adherence to raw cell. So this filamentous shape or flask-like shape is very important to uh, mycoplasma uh, to uh, make adherence between mycoplasma and host cell. These structures are a complex, complex group 
of interactive proteins, adhesions, and adherence accessory proteins. The proteins are proline-rich, which influences the protein folding and binding and is important in the adherence to cells. Mycoplasma attached to the surface of ciliated and non-ciliated cells. This is one of the pathogenic or various factors of mycoplasma. Some mycoplasma lack the distinctive structures but use adhesions of proteins or have alternative mechanism rather than the filamentous shape or flask shape to adhere to host cell. The subsequent events in infection are less well understood but may include several factors as follows. Direct cytotoxicity through generation of hydrogen peroxide and superoxide radicals, cytolysis mediated by antigen antibody reactions or by chemotaxis and action of mononuclear cells and competition for and depletion of nutrients. Mycoplasma pneumonia is a prominent cause of pneumonia, especially in person 5 to 20 years of age. Mycoplasma pneumonia is transmitted from person to person by means of infected respiratory secretions. Infection is initiated by attachment of the organism's tip to a receptor on the surface of respiratory epithelial cells and by helping of the proteins of attachment, adhesion, and during the infection, organism remain extracellular. Mycoplasma pneumonia is generally a mild disease. The clinical symptom, symptom of infection ranges from asymptomatic infection to serious pneumonitis with occasional neurologic and hematologic involvement and a variety of possible skin lesions. The incubation period varies between or from one to three weeks. The onset is usually incidence with lassitude of fever, headache, sore throat, and cough. Initially, the cough is nonproductive, but it is occasionally paroxysmal. Paroxysmal uh, with uh, convulsions. Later, there are maybe blood streaked sputum and chest pain. Complications are uncommon, but hemolytic anemia may occur. The most common pathologic findings are intestinal and peribronchial pneumonitis and necrotizing bronchiolitis. The diagnosis of mycoplasma pneumonia is largely made by the clinical recognition of the syndrome. Laboratory tests are of secondary value. The white cell count may be slightly elevated. PCR assay of specimen from throat swab or other clinical material can be diagnostic, but is generally performed only in interference laboratories. So, the common laboratories cannot make or uh, diagnose the disease by PCR. Tetracyclines or mycins can produce clinical improvement but do not eradicate the mycoplasmas. Mycoplasma hominis is strongly associated with infection of the uterine tubes, salpingitis, and the tubo ovarian abscesses. The organism can be isolated from the uterine tubes of about 10% of patients with salpingitis but not from women with no signs of disease. Women with salpingitis more commonly have antibodies against mycoplasma hominis than women with no disease. Mycoplasma hominis has been isolated from the blood of about 10% of women who have postmortal or postpartum fever and occasionally from joint fluid cultures of patients with arthritis. The third mycoplasma is Mycoplasma genitalium, which was originally isolated from urethral cultures of two men with non gonococcal arthritis. But culture of Mycoplasma genitalium is difficult, so it needs more specific and specialized tests. 
and subsequent observation have been based on data obtained by PCR, molecular probes, and serologic tests. The data suggests that mycoplasma genitalium in men is associated with some cases of acute as well as a chronic non gonococcal arthritis, while in women, mycoplasma genitalium has been associated with a variety of infections such as cervicitis, endometritis, salpingitis, and infertility. Tetracyclines and erythromycins are effective both in vitro and in vivo and are at present the drugs of choice in mycoplasma pneumonia such as we mentioned previously. Urea plasma ureoliticum, the first bacterial species in this lecture, like Mycoplasma hominis, has been associated with a variety of diseases, but is a demonstrated cause in only a few of them. Urea plasma ureoliticum, which requires 10% urea of growth, probably causes non gonococcal arthritis in some men, but the majority of cases of non gonococcal arthritis are caused by Chlamydia trachomatis. Urea plasma ureoliticum is common in the female genital tract, where the association with disease is weak. Urea plasma ureoliticum has been associated with lung disease in premature low birth weight infants who acquire the organism during birth, but a causal effect has not been clearly demonstrated. The evidence that urea plasma ureoliticum is associated with involuntary infertility is at best marginal. Tetracyclines and erythromycins are effective in the treatment of, of urea plasmas, but most are resistant to tetracycline. The reference of this lecture is Medical Microbiology by Jowitz, and if you have any question, please don't hesitate to ask me in Google Classroom of Medical Microbiology. Thank you.